Hi, I'm Siobhan Sarna with SIBO SOS and the Lymphatic Rescue Summit and Digestion SOS Rescue and Le- Relief for IBS, SIBO and Leaky Gut, author of Healing SIBO and on and on. I have been on a project mission, better way of putting it, to help people with their digestive disorders and actually their overall health and being able to absorb their nutrition because one of the symptoms of digestive disorders is actually malnutrition, believe it or not. That's sometimes why we can actually gain weight because the body thinks we're starving. And of course, you can certainly be starved of nutrition and lose weight. And Karen Krishnan is my special guest. And Karen has been a supporter of my projects and mission since the very first time we didn't even meet in person, but just I wrote him an email. Thanks to Dr. Allison Seebecker for introducing me to him. And he was in and has been consistent in the support. Now, who is he? He is the co-founder of Microbiome Labs. He is a microbiologist. He is the gentleman who teaches other teachers, who teaches other doctors, clinicians, researchers about the microbiome and what we can do to manage it. I'm going to wrap that up. There's a lot more to his intro, but let's meet the man himself. Hi there. Hi, Hi. Siobhan. Thank you for having me. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for being here. You um, have, of course, a very famous probiotic that so many people have heard of, which is Megaspore, and it is a life changer for so many people. And you've expanded in IgG, um, all of these other incredible products, and you've always given us a great discount when people purchase through us, and I've always appreciated that so much. Thank you. So we'll give you that info at the end. But you've got some new developments, man. Yeah. Oh, my so I'm just going to be let's shameless and show everybody what it is. Thawed mate. Yep. So tell us what happened here. How, how has this come to be? I'm so excited. Yeah, it's, it's been a bit of a game changer type of product, even for us. And we've, we've put out a number of game changers out there over the last few years. Um, and really the way it came to be is, you know, we follow a philosophy very closely. Um, number one is we look for therapeutic gaps and we look to fulfill areas that aren't really being addressed by other companies. You know, one of the issues we have with the supplement industry in general, it's a, it's a very me too industry, right? If someone innovates, inevitably the next 98 companies are just going to try to copy them and do it a, a cheaper watered down version of it. Um, and so we always said if somebody's already doing a category or type of product that we think is important, if they're already doing it well, then we're not going to get into it. We're, we're more than happy to recommend the product to people. Um, but if there is a therapeutic gap, then we're, of course, going to jump into there, especially we see it being a critical gap. Um, and FODMAPs, uh, we'll talk about exactly what those are, um, is a critical gap that we see because, number one, um, there are more and more people that are having to avoid FODMAPs, right? So what are these FODMAPs? I'm sure many of your audience have, have heard about it. Maybe some it sounds somewhat familiar. But it basically stands for um, fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols, right? So what the hell is all of those big words? Well, they're basically uh, unique carbohydrates, uh, complex carbohydrates, fiber-ish uh, type of molecules that are found in lots and lots of fruits and vegetables, right? So lots and lots of healthy foods. These aren't bad foods. The compounds aren't bad. There's nothing wrong with them. They're all perfectly healthy. Not only are they healthy, they're absolutely necessary. And yet our systems are dysfunctional to the point where we can't handle them, right? So then the the response becomes, let's avoid them. But there's a huge detriment to avoiding them, right? And the detriment is loss of diversity within the microbiome and loss of certain functionality because we as as a species has actually come to require these types of fermentable carbohydrates in our diet, right? The vast majority of bacteria that live in our, in and on our system live in our large bowel. And the large bowel is a large fermentive base. And that large fermentive base provides us with all kinds of unique nutrients that we require for, for, for function. It's not a luxury, it's a requirement. We require for function, we cannot get those compounds directly from food. We cannot synthesize them ourselves. We are 100% dependent on microbes in the large bowel to produce these compounds for us by fermenting these types of carbohydrates, right? 
But because so many people have a dysfunctional gut, especially small bowel, they can't tolerate these food groups because what happens is they get a lot of bloating and distension and discomfort. And again, the easy solution has been avoid, avoid, avoid. But there is a huge long-term detriment to avoiding these. So this, to us, was a massive issue because when you go through their 15 plus years of microbiome research, there's one message that always resonates through and that is diversity is paramount to health, right? Diversity in the gut microbiome is the biggest determining factor of your overall health and wellness, your longevity, your immune function, your resilience, your ability to tolerate the world around you, your emotional state of mind, your depression, anxiety, your skin, all kinds of things. Everything is determined by diversity in your microbiome. And unfortunately, we are losing diversity at an epic proportion in our culture, right? If you compare our hunter-gatherer tribes that still exist today, right, the tribes in Papua New Guinea and Hadza, Tanzania, those tribes have almost doubled the microbial ecosystem than we do, right? So in the last 100 years or so, we've lost half of our bacterial population in our gut. And with that, we've lost a lot of functionality. We've lost a lot of resilience. We've lost a lot of capability of adapt adaptation to our environment. Hence, we see things that these other ancestral type of tribes don't see. We see things like inflammatory bowel diseases. We see allergies and asthma and depression and anxiety and skin disorders all at a rate that, we, that are not seen in more of these hunter-gatherer type of tribes, right? So because they have this amazing diversity. So having to cut out FODMAPs out of your diet may be a, a, an acute solution to a symptom of bloating and distension, but it's going to cost you in a massive way down the road. So we saw this as a huge issue. Now, the beauty of it is that all of these carbohydrates can be broken down into their components or broken down into components that don't cause gas and bloating by enzymes, right? And there's a, the, the world works by enzymes, right? Bacteria work by enzymes. We talk about all of the functionality of bacteria. Well, most of the bacterial functionality comes from their ability to produce unique enzymes in order to utilize carbohydrates and so on. So the simple solution to us isn't cut out all of these important foods. And keep in mind, we're talking about things like garlic and onions and peas and watermelon and berries and avocado and pistachio, you know, these aren't bad foods. These are all some of the healthiest foods there are, but you, but people can't tolerate them because of the presence of these FODMAPs within the foods. And the FODMAPs themselves, again, I don't want to uh, villainize them because they're not bad things, right? They are absolutely essential and they're very nutritious, uh, nutritious carbohydrates. We just can't deal with it. And so what we decided to do is put together an enzyme blend that helps people tolerate the consumption of FODMAPs. And once you can tolerate the consumption of FODMAPs, then it allows you to start to diversify your diet. It improves your quality of life. So you're not always being ultra cautious as to what you're putting into your system. And you're allowed then to feed the, the microbes in your system all of the nutrients that they need in order for you to actually improve your health, wellness, and longevity, right? So that's really the key. And keep in mind, even though like take an avocado, for example, right? It contains FODMAPs. So if you are sensitive to FODMAPs, you can't eat an avocado, which, not, which means you're not just avoiding the FODMAPs, you're also avoiding all of the other nutritious, nutritious advantages of an avocado, right? Studies show avocado actually reduces postprandial or post-meal inflammation that's associated with inflammation from meals that tend to have higher levels of saturated fat and so on, right? Avocados, if you eat one avocado a day, it increases your weight loss. So yes, we have, hold on, you have to say that again. Yeah. I read that, uh, what do you have, like micro moments? You have yeah, a little- micro moments. Yes, and so you definitely wanna follow Kieran on, and Microbiome Labs on social media because he's been putting out these like breaking news uh, blur blitz. And um, I read, I listened to you talk about the avocado. I've been eating an avocado every day since. So awesome. thank you for that. But I also wanted to just mention, you know, bloating. Yep. Uh, apple a day keeps the doctor away. Wrong. Mm -hmm. Wrong. If you have a, a FODMAP 
intolerance. Sensitivity. Of yeah. mm -hmm. sensitivity. If you have small intestine bacterial overgrowth, if you have IBS, and remember, one of the biggest things I'm trying to get out to the world is that if you've had food poisoning, it's one of the largest underlying causes of post-infectious IBS. And that is a, and SIBO is also like the other side of the coin. Okay. Mm -hmm. So not everyone who has IBS has SIBO and not everyone who has SIBO has IBS, but we're talking about the vast majority here. And there are so many people out there just talking about diet. Yep. IBS bloggers, book, blah, blah, blah. That's great. I'm glad people are talking because they're, they're talking about low FODMAP diet. This is exactly what Karen's talking about. But we need to get to the underlying cause, which is this whole, you know, it could be adhesions, it could be a ton of other underlying causes. However, to control the symptoms of IBS and SIBO, you have to control your diet. It's mm -hmm. a low FODMAP diet. It's just to connect the dots here. Think about it. You could eat an avocado or an apple and not have bloat from it, mm -hmm. or even just to reduce the bloat and, you know, start to build the diversity of your microbiome. No more food fear. I mean, exactly. psychologically alone, Kieran, what a boon, what an incredible tool and helpmate. So anyway, I have one question. Can I, if I can't do capsules or I have pill fatigue, can I sprinkle this on the food? You can. You'd want to do it right before you consume the food. You don't want to do it too much, uh, too, so with like too much time. Thing. Yeah, ahead because it is an enzyme, so it'll start acting on the food itself, okay. right? So yeah. um, if you if you really do have pill fatigue, you just open it up, put it into on, on your food, and consume the food right away. Okay. Uh, but it's got a variety of very unique enzymes like alpha galactosidase, inulinase. Uh, it's got a glucose isomerase, pectinase. These are not enzymes you will find in your normal digestive enzyme product, right? These are very, very unique enzymes that specifically go after the types of carbohydrate bonds that are found in FODMAP foods, right? And so they alleviate the gas and the discomfort and the bloating from the FODMAPs within those foods, thereby allowing you to enjoy those foods and then gain all the other benefits from those foods, right? So there's lots and lots of foods that you cannot eat if you have a FODMAP sensitivity. Things like broccoli and beets and bell peppers and bok choy and all of these not only tasty, amazing things, but really, really healthy foods, right? And, and to me, one of the big things is, A, maintaining diversity in your microbiome or, or driving diversity in the microbiome. And you do that through diet is the most prominent way to do it. And number two, quality of life. You know, I have friends who have, who've had, fortunately, these kinds of sensitivities, and it's so hard for them to go out anywhere, right? It's so hard for them to meet their friends and all that for lunch and dinner because they have to give the, the waiters uh, a severe interrogation in third degree, and they have to look at apps and lists and all that of what they can and can't eat. I mean, it's, 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 it's horrible. And so for us, this was a huge gap in the marketplace, because I can guarantee you there isn't another enzyme product out there that deals with the same exact thing. And we wanted to give people their part of their life back, you know, the ability to just enjoy food, eat healthy things that are going to support their microbiome without all the headache, hassle, and fear of experiencing those side effects. This is a massive, massive breakthrough, guys. Why is it that you have been able to do this? Let, let's get to that. So you have so many innovations. You are one of the leaders in research, et cetera. But this seems, you know, it's not a probiotic. It's yep. different. So tell me why this has been able to be achieved. Yeah. So there's a couple of reasons that, that set us apart and why we would come up with something like this and put it on the market, right? So as I mentioned earlier, the vast majority of companies in the supplement space are Me Too companies. So most companies put out products that are already out in the marketplace, right? So they basically kind of copy what other companies are doing, and then they do their own version of it. And so innovation is actually quite stifled in the, in the supplement industry because the majority of companies have a business model of simply copying what's hot and what's new, right? If, if something becomes hot and new, you'll see 700 products uh, related to that in, in basically overnight because it's a new hot thing. There's nothing hot and sexy about digesting FODMAPs, right? Um, it's not a sensation. This takes nerds to go, what's a huge issue? Well, a huge issue is people avoiding all of these foods, having this poor quality of life, and then hurting their microbiome diversity. So it takes people like us to really dig into 
the areas that really need attention. And then once you figure that out, you have to go that there's a big scientific process to go, okay, what are the bonds that are associated with FODMAPs? So what are the carbohydrate bonds? What do they look like? What types of enzymes may have the capability of breaking down those bonds so that you don't end up fermenting them in the small bowel and having gas, right? And bloating and all of the other symptoms that come along with it. So it, it really requires quite a bit of innovation. It requires a lot of um, time and effort put into that innovative practice, which is what we built our company on, right? We've never done a product that is similar in any way to any other product that's on the market. We always, always innovate. So if we bring something out, it means that we've spent a couple years, sometimes four or five years on it, figuring it out, trying to figure out the best way to formulate it, the best ingredients, the best, and then, and then how to study it as well, right? So I think we're in a unique position and it just kind of fits our, our modus operandi. It's very, very appropriate. And with all the incredible long conversations that you and I have had in a great way and, you know, talking about this basically 24-7, 365 for you for how many years now, you, it, it's just a perfect fit. It's it just is that perfect natural next step. So I'm so excited about it. Thank you. Now, yeah. You know, and I would say if you want like a good digestive enzyme, there's lots of companies that do a good digestive enzyme, right? A basic digestive enzyme with your proteases and cellulases and all that. There's no reason for us to do it because other people have done it pretty sure. well already. Uh, but this was, yeah, this was a gap, a significant, significant gap. So I'm going to keep taking my other digestive enzymes because I need mm -hmm. that help. And I'm going to take this at the same time. This is two yep. different caps or per meal and what I'm going to do is, this is, so it sold out when it first got launched, you guys, gone. So we're very excited, back in stock. So hang on to your hats and get in there while the getting's good. I want one for my kitchen table where I eat. I mm -hmm. want one for by my bed where I snack. And then I want one for my purse. And then I want a backup. Yeah. <laughs> I do not want to ever have to wait for this again. So I wanted to just say thank you for sharing this with the world. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for um, all of the support that you've given to my projects and platform and the community, the incredible community here. And um, I can't wait to see what you're going to do next. And meanwhile, while everybody, grab this, see how it works for you. You're saying, Kieran, that you've heard people notice it after the first meal. Think about it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. In an apple in ages, right? Because it's it flares you for whatever reason, fod mappy, have that, have that half a slice, have a, half an apple. You know, mm -hmm. I can understand why you might be hesitant and take this, see how you do. This is exciting stuff. And remember, this is how you manage your symptoms, right? You, you manage your symptoms of bloating and gas through lowering your fermentable load by lowering your, your FODMAPs. That's why it's a low FODMAP diet that we're all facing, right? So, here is your new best friend. I'm very thrilled. Mm -hmm. And and it also helps to build, just to recap, the underlying cause of all this, which is that microbiome lack of diversity. Yep. It dove dovetails with the importance of figuring out your underlying cause being, is it adhesions? Is it because you had food poisoning? Is it because of scleroderma, surgery, opioids, whatever it is, Okay. Get through life, get through the day, get that nutrition back and absorbed. Very excited and feel better while you're doing it. Thank you, Karen, so much. Thank you. Carry on, sir.